Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. Andrew, I want to personally say thank you for, for what you have been able to do for us in your, your adamant pursuit of the Word um, and how you have not wavered, you've not gotten into the grandstands, and you have delivered that to us. I might be one voice, but I represent millions and millions of changed lives. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Tuesday's broadcast of The Gospel Truth. Today, I am continuing a series that I just started yesterday talking about the old man is dead. This is a brand new teaching. Now, I've mentioned this numerous times, and I've got a teaching on the book of Romans. This is over 400 pages where I teach verse by verse through the book of Romans and give commentary, and this is powerful. I actually spent, I think it was uh, either 14 or 16 weeks teaching on this last year. So I, I have this material, but it's in a sense buried in this huge book. And um, I also have a living commentary, which is a digital commentary where I've written footnotes on over 26,000 verses in the Bible. So this material, I've mentioned it, but the Lord woke me up at 4 o'clock in the morning and told me that this is so important about understanding that your old man is dead, gone, non-existent. You don't have a sinful nature anymore. This is radical teaching. It's di directly opposed to what most Christians believe, and it really goes to your identity. It goes to the core. If you think that you are still an old sinner, you're just saved by grace, but that is your nature, that you have this sinful, uh, corrupted nature on the inside of you, then I guarantee you, you're going to wind up living that out. It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. But on the other hand, when you understand that your life is completely changed and there is no longer anything that is making you sin, you are not compelled to sin. You have been taught to sin, and it's become habitual but you can change that, and you have a new nature. When you understand that, it changes everything. This is one of the most foundational things that the Lord ever taught me, and uh, I'm going to be sharing it with you. So yesterday, I gave an introduction to this, and I tell you what I said yesterday, uh, it could take weeks and weeks to unpack what I said yesterday on my program. It's a brief overview of the things that we're going to be talking about. And so I encourage you to go back. You can go to our website. You can watch yesterday's teaching, or you can get this brand new album entitled The Old Man is Dead. You can get the living commentary. You can get this book on Romans. But I encourage you to please get this. And this brand new series, I think it's going to be great for if you share this with somebody, I can guarantee you there's going to be people like, you can't believe this. This is like heresy. And rather than give them a 400-plus page book that they have to read in order to get it, you could give them this teaching that's in a condensed form just on this one thing, and it would really help make that point. Of course, you can't convince somebody else of something until you've been convinced of it. So first of all, you need to get this and understand these truths for yourself. Romans chapter 6, verse 1. After we've been talking about the grace of God, if you preach grace properly and show that God loves us completely separate from our performance, His love is unconditional, no qualifications on it. If you preach grace the way that Paul preached it, then this should be a question that comes up continually. Romans chapter 6, verse 1, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? And the answer is in the first two words of the next verse, God forbid. Absolutely not. No, that's not true. The Bible doesn't teach that. Paul wasn't preaching it. I'm not preaching that, but it is a logical question. If God's love is unconditional, then why should we live holy? See, the church has basically said that the reason you live holy is God won't love you. God won't bless you. God won't answer your prayers if you don't live holy. If you have sin in your life, God isn't going to use you. God won't answer your prayers, etc. And the church has tied God's love to our performance. The moment you start saying that God's love is unconditional, 
All you've got to do is believe and receive. If you doubt, you do without. If you start preaching that, I can guarantee you people are going to be offended. So the church has used, it has tied God's love to you, to your performance, to motivate you to live a holy life. And so Paul is saying, can we just go live in sin? God forbid. And here's the reason Paul gives. In this chapter, he gives two reasons why a Christian lives holy. And again, this is all uh, predicated. It's based upon what he had said in the first five chapters about that God's love is totally unconditional. It has nothing to do with your goodness. It has everything to do with what Jesus did for you. And you are accepted in the sight of God through Jesus, not through yourself. So because he had made all of those things, he says, what am I saying? Can we just go live in sin? God forbid. And here's the first reason he gives in this chapter why you don't go live in sin. In verse 2, it says, God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? <laughs> what a radical statement. This says we are dead to sin. And most people just have a disconnect right here because what they're looking at are their actions. And they're saying, man, I'm not dead to sin. I still get mad. I still lose my temper. I still lust. I still do things. And they, they think, man, I'm not dead to sin. And they just have a disconnect because they can't understand this. You know, let me share this with you. And I've got, uh, well, in this book right here, I've got 420 pages or so uh, footnotes on this very thing. I'm just going to share with you just a couple of things that I wrote in my footnotes uh, in my living commentary on this. But in the book of Romans, there is a Greek word that is used for sin 45 times. And please forgive me if I mispronounce all of this stuff uh, because, uh, man, I am not a Greek. I know a little Greek. Uh, one, he, he runs a deli, but I don't know Greek. And so I don't know how to pronounce these words, but I think it's hamartia is the way that you say it. And it was used 47 times in the book of Romans. There are a total of 49 times that the word sin or sins in the English is used. And out of that, 47 of those times are this Greek word hamartia, I think. And it's not a verb, it's a noun. A noun refers to a person, place, or thing. A verb refers to something that a person, place, or thing does. It's an action word. So the point is that hamartia is talking about not your actions of sin, but it's talking about the sin nature or what is called the old man. So all of that being said, let me go back and read this here. It says in verse 2, Romans 6, 2, God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? This is not saying that a Christian cannot commit an action of sin. What this is talking about, that your old sin nature, again, this word that is used here is a noun. It's not describing what you do. It's describing what makes you do what you do. It's talking about the sin nature. And out of the 49 times that sin or sins is referred to in the book of Romans, all but one of those is referring to the sin nature, not to an action of sin. And so when this says that we are dead to sin, this is not saying that you can't act out and commit things that are wrong and do acts of sin. This is saying you are dead to that sin nature, that that sin nature on the inside of you is dead. Now that raises a lot of questions and I'm talking as fast as I can and I'm going to deal with these things as we go through here. I haven't got time. I can't say them all right now, but I know that some people have had this so ingrained into them that you do have a sin nature that you just immediately 
DON'T uh, RECEIVE THIS AND YOU'RE THINKING THIS IS HERESY. I'M GOING TO GO THROUGH AND SHOW YOU. IT MAKES IT CLEAR AND IT SAYS IT OVER AND OVER AND OVER IN THIS CHAPTER THAT YOUR OLD MAN IS DEAD AND HE DOES NOT RESURRECT EVERY MORNING. THE SIN NATURE, SATAN DOES NOT HAVE RESURRECTION POWER. YOUR SIN NATURE DOES NOT COME BACK. SO I'M GOING TO EXPLAIN THIS IN MORE DETAIL, BUT RIGHT NOW IN VERSE 2 IT SAYS, GOD FORBID, THE NUMBER ONE REASON YOU DO NOT LIVE IN SIN AS A CHRISTIAN IS BECAUSE YOU DON'T HAVE THAT SIN NATURE. YOU ARE DEAD TO SIN. THAT SIN NATURE DIED. AND THE PART THAT COMPELLED YOU TO LIVE IN SIN IS GONE. AGAIN, I KNOW THAT MOST PEOPLE'S OBJECTION TO THE THINGS I'M SAYING IS NOT BIBLICAL. IF YOU WERE TO READ THE REST OF CHAPTER 6, uh, IT JUST SAYS THIS, THAT IN THE SAME WAY THAT CHRIST DIED ONCE, WE ONLY DIE ONCE, AND NOW WE JUST HAVE TO RECKON OURSELVES DEAD UNTO SIN. IT JUST MAKES THIS ABUNDANTLY CLEAR. BUT MOST PEOPLE'S OBJECTION TO WHAT I'M SAYING ISN'T BIBLICAL OR THEOLOGICAL, IT'S PRACTICAL. THEY JUST THINK, WELL, I KNOW ME, AND YOU'RE SAYING I'M DEAD TO SIN, AND YET, MAN, I CAN GUARANTEE YOU, I STILL LUST, I STILL GET ANGRY, I STILL SMOKE, I STILL DRINK, I STILL USE PROFANITY SOMETIMES, I STILL DO THIS. AND BY uh, EXAMPLE, THEY KNOW THAT THEY COMMIT SIN, AND SO THEY JUST THINK, I CAN'T BELIEVE THIS. AGAIN, A CHRISTIAN CAN ACT OUT SIN, YOU CAN COMMIT ACTS OF SIN, BUT YOUR SIN NATURE IS GONE. AND AS THESE VERSES GO ON TO SAY, IF YOU FULLY UNDERSTAND THAT AND GET A REVELATION OF WHAT THAT MEANS, THEN IT WILL BREAK THE DOMINION OF SIN. YOU WILL SIN LESS AND LESS AND LESS. I DON'T KNOW THAT ANY OF US ARE EVER GOING TO BE PERFECT IN OUR ACTIONS UNTIL WE GO TO BE WITH THE LORD BECAUSE WE HAVE FLESH AND WE LIVE IN A FALLEN WORLD AND SATAN JUST KNOWS HOW TO PUSH YOUR HOT BUTTONS AND WE'RE GOING TO CONSTANTLY FAIL. DID YOU KNOW SIN IS NOT ONLY WHEN YOU BREAK ONE OF THE TEN COMMANDMENTS OR ONE OF THE COMMANDS THAT ARE GIVEN TO US, BUT ROMANS 14, 23 SAYS, WHATSOEVER IS NOT OF FAITH IS SIN. SO ANYTIME YOU AREN'T IN FAITH, IF YOU EVER GET INTO FEAR, IF YOU JUST STRUGGLE TO BELIEVE THAT GOD'S GOING TO HEAL YOU, THAT GOD'S GOING TO PROVIDE, ANYTIME YOU GET INTO UNBELIEF, THAT IS SIN IS WHAT THE SCRIPTURE SAYS. SO IF YOU USE THE BIBLE DEFINITION OF SIN, NOT ONLY SIN BEING WHEN YOU TRANSGRESS A DIRECT COMMAND, BUT IF YOU KNOW TO DO GOOD AND IF YOU DON'T DO IT, IF YOU AREN'T IN FAITH, IF YOU ARE HAVING FEAR AND DOUBT COME AT YOU, IF YOU USE THAT AS A DEFINITION OF SIN, WELL, THEN EVERY ONE OF US FALLS SHORT. NONE OF US HAVE REACHED PERFECTION IN THIS PHYSICAL BODY YET. AND SO, YES, CHRISTIANS CAN SIN. THEY CAN COMMIT ACTS OF SIN, BUT IF YOU WERE TRULY BORN AGAIN, WHEN YOU GOT BORN AGAIN, GOD TOOK OUT OF YOU THAT SINFUL NATURE AND YOU ARE NOW A NEW PERSON IN CHRIST. YOU ARE NOT SCHIZOPHRENIC. YOU DO NOT HAVE TWO NATURES. AND IF YOU THINK THAT YOU DO, THAT'S ONE OF THE REASONS THAT YOU SEE FAILURE IN YOUR LIFE IS BECAUSE YOU ONLY RESIST SIN TO A POINT AND THEN IF YOU JUST STILL HAVE THE FEELINGS, YOU JUST SAY, WELL, THAT'S WHO I AM. AND YOU GIVE IN TO IT. YOU KNOW, I'VE GOT A GUY THAT I'VE BEEN DEALING WITH WHO'S COME OUT OF HOMOSEXUALITY AND HE'S REPENTED OF IT. HE'S BORN AGAIN AND HE'S A NEW PERSON IN CHRIST JESUS. BUT HE SPENT YEARS AS A HOMOSEXUAL. AND BECAUSE OF IT, HE STILL HAS SOME HOMOSEXUAL THOUGHTS. AND EVERY TIME THAT HE HAS, YOU KNOW, SOME TEMPTATION OR SOME OLD FEELING COME TO HIM, HE COMES TO ME AND HE'S JUST HEARTBROKEN. I'm, I'M STILL STRUGGLING WITH THIS. I, I'm, AND HE'S STRUGGLING TO SEE THAT HE'S A NEW PERSON. AND I'VE BEEN TELLING HIM, NO, YOUR OLD SINFUL NATURE IS GONE. YOU ARE NOT A HOMOSEXUAL ANYMORE. YOU MAY HAVE BEEN, AND YOU, BECAUSE YOU LIVE THAT LIFESTYLE AND YOU PROGRAMMED YOURSELF, YOU MAY STILL HAVE SOME THOUGHTS AND YOU MAY STILL HAVE TO DEAL WITH SOME TEMPTATIONS EVERY ONCE IN A WHILE, BUT THAT IS NOT WHO YOU ARE. YOU ARE A NEW PERSON IN CHRIST. AND I'VE BEEN SEEING HIM JUST COME ALIVE AS HE BEGINS TO RECOGNIZE THAT EVEN THOUGH I STILL MAY HAVE A TENDENCY OR A THOUGHT SOMETIME uh, THAT I, THAT'S NOT WHO I AM. I'M BORN AGAIN. AND IT IS SETTING HIM FREE. BUT ON THE OTHER HAND, I'VE HAD PEOPLE COME TO ME, uh, ESPECIALLY DEALING WITH DRUGS. I REMEMBER THIS ONE GUY WHO HE HAD BEEN IN FOUR OR FIVE DIFFERENT DRUG REHAB 
things, and he would be taught how to cope and how to get away from friends, how to change his behavior, how to modify his behavior so that he wouldn't get back into drugs. And he had been through drug rehab program after drug rehab program. But every time he'd get out, he would lapse and he would fall back into it. And he was just totally devastated. And he was in one of these programs when somebody gave him my teaching about this. And he found out that he was a new person. And when he changed his identity and quit saying that I am a drug addict who's trying to go straight, but no, I'm a brand new person. And when he got that revelation and focused on it and found out who he was, then the sin of drug addiction just fell off of him because he, that wasn't him anymore. That wasn't who he was. You know, I heard Keith Moore. Keith Moore's a friend of mine, and I heard him preach one time, and he was talking about a man who was struggling with uh, cigarettes and smoking. You know, I don't believe that you go to hell for smoking. I believe you smell like you've been there, but you don't go to hell if you smoke. And so, but it's a damaging thing. Most people recognize it's wrong, and lots of people are trying to get rid of it, and they can't. And I've heard many people say that it was easier to get rid of alcohol and drugs than it was smoking. Man, there is a physical addiction that goes along with smoking. So anyway, this one man came to Keith Moore and asked him how he could get rid of this. And Keith, you know, it was a similar thing he was saying. He, he said it in his own way, but he was making this same point that you you are a born-again person, and you aren't this person that struggles with smoking. That is not the real you. That's your flesh. That's your old uh, nature has taught you those kind of things, and your physical body became addicted to it. But that's not who you really are. And so Keith was telling this guy this, and the way Keith instructed this guy to deal with his smoking, he says, you're going to, you know, you aren't going to be able to just stop cold turkey. Now, again, some people can, but some people can't. He says, you aren't going to be able to stop cold turkey. He says, go ahead and smoke. But every time you smoke, say, this is not who I am. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And this guy at first thought, well, that's terrible. And he says, but that's better than just smoking and being condemned. You need to start focusing on who you are in Christ. And so this guy, every time he lit up a cigarette, he just went through this thing and he says, I am the righteousness of God. And then he'd light up his cigarette and smoke. And he would see the conflict between saying, I'm the righteousness of God. And then here I am struggling with something that he hates and that he, he feels is from the devil and he totally wants to get away. And so there was just this conflict every time he lit up a cigarette. And I forget the length of time, but you know, over a few weeks or a month or something like that, one day he was lighting up a cigarette and right as he put the cigarette in his mouth and was getting ready to light it, he just went through this thing that he had always said. And he said, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And all of a sudden it just dawned on him. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the Word of God. It doesn't matter if you're the one saying it or somebody else is saying it. And he just said, I am the righteousness of God. I'm in right standing with God. I'm a new person. This is not who I am. And he just put that cigarette down, threw his cigarettes away. And at the time I heard this testimony, it had been months or a year, and he had never gone back and smoked again. And it was because he finally started seeing that this is not who I am. See, this is the... I'll get criticism for this. Please don't even send it in because I'm not going to read it. I've been criticized and people misunderstand what I'm saying. But this is the reason I'm against a lot of these 12-step programs. Now, I admit that people get helped by that. 12-step program is better than no-step program. So there are people that have gotten free through that. And if that's the way that you got free, hallelujah, praise God. I am not against it. But I have been to Alcoholic Anonymous with people that I was ministering to, and they were just saying, I've got to have this program. I've got to go to these meetings. And so I have actually sat in and listened to some of these meetings. And the thing that I disagree with is, see, they get up and they start by saying, hello, my name is Andrew or whatever the person is. And I've been an alcoholic for 12 years, but I've been sober for two months or whatever. And then they'll, they'll go on. But see, they still identify 
as an alcoholic. And they will say that they're only one drink away from being an alcoholic again. So they never change their identity. They are an alcoholic. They're just a sober alcoholic at a moment. And I actually was on television with a woman who is famous for being a movie star, but she fell into um, alcoholism and she was on this television program talking about her 12-step program and how she got set free. And she wasn't drinking booze. And so that's good. That's better than being a drunk. But I was with her for two days behind the scenes and this woman was still addicted. She still had an addiction mentality. She had to have a diet Dr. Pepper in a glass with ice in her hand at all times. I mean, it couldn't be anything else. She still had an addictive personality. She was still hooked, but she had just changed the substance. And you don't get drunk on Diet Dr. Pepper. And so she was functioning better than she did. But see, she never dealt with the root cause of it. She still saw herself as, an, as, a, as a drunk, as an alcoholic. She just changed substance. She was still dependent. She still couldn't master these kind of things. But I'm telling you, when you get born again, you are no longer an alcoholic, a drug addict, a sinner. That is not who you are. You had your nature changed. And if you could ever understand that you have a brand new nature and not just hear it and shake your head and say, okay, but if you could embrace it and see that you are a brand new person as a man thinks in his heart, so is he, Proverbs 23, 7. If you could truly see that you are a brand new creature and you are identical to Jesus in your spirit and you aren't that old sinner anymore, you aren't that old alcoholic or drug addict or homosexual or prostitute or whatever it was, if you could see that you are a brand new person, it would set you free from that sin. But if you go through life saying, well, I'm just an old sinner, saved by grace. I, I'm still a drunk. I'm still a drug addict. I'm still a prostitute. But, but now I'm not acting that way anymore. You'll still have the guilt and the condemnation associated with it. And you'll still be beat down by that. You may be able to modify your behavior, but you won't be free. Man, to be free, you've got to understand, just like this says, God forbid, know the number one reason that we don't live in sin is because we are dead to that sin nature. That sin nature does not exist. It is dead, gone, and non-existent. I tell you, if you could understand this, it would radically, radically change your life. So I've just barely got started, and I've got a lot more to share. I've got a brand new series out on this entitled, The Old Man is Dead. The subtitle is, Goodbye and Good Riddance, Amen. If you understand this, it'll set you free. And I've also, I'm also offering this book on Romans. Now, this includes what I'm talking about, but it goes through the entire book of Romans, verse by verse. It's over 400 pages, and this is one of our most powerful teachings. And then I've also got a living commentary, which is a digital commentary that I've written on over 26,000 verses in the Bible. And, of course, it has all of this uh, information in the book of Romans. Listen to our announcer as he gives you some information, and then please receive these materials. In the beautiful town of Woodland Park, Karis Bible College has been changing people's lives for over 25 years. The people here are so like-minded. They want to help you grow. These are people who genuinely care about you. They want the best for you. Be prepared to be blown away with the teachings. It's not just a season in your life. There's no way you can't change. You can't really go wrong going to a place that you get to sit and listen to the Word for four hours a day. Being under the Word that much just allowed God to pour so much into me. If you feel supernatural peace about coming to Karis, that's God. I know you're like, how, when, where, all these questions, just do it. The Lord will provide. I was doubting and second guessing it, but when I took that step of faith, immediately like things were provided. Just being around like-minded believers, teachers who are there for you and ready to talk to you at any moment and answer your questions, there's just nothing like it. Just follow the leading of the one that you serve, and that's always going to be the right direction to go. 
I want to let you know that we had a groundbreaking for our student housing in Karis Bible College on May the 11th. You can go to our website and find video of that. But we are now beginning to build student housing, and we have a partnership entitled Foundation Builders that is just specifically dedicated towards building out our facilities here at Karis Bible College. I would appreciate it if you would pray about it and join with me in helping train people to be soldiers in this fight, to go out and help take our nation back and bring people into the kingdom of God. I guarantee you it'll be money well invested. So you can check it out, our Foundation Builders for Student Housing here at Karis Bible College. God will come through. Miracles are waiting for you, but not if you stay in the boat. It is vital for the church to be the salt of the earth and have the God intended righteous influence on our culture and community. Faith doesn't give you the whole picture. God doesn't tell you every step along the way. He says, trust me. Is the finish line how much stuff you can accumulate before you die and leave it all behind? Or is the finish line standing before God? We must rebuild the United States of America, this constitutional republic under God. The time is now. We cannot wait any longer. Discover that your sin nature is gone and that you have a new nature in Christ when you get Andrew's brand new teaching, The Old Man is Dead. Andrew's new series, The Old Man is Dead, is available as a CD or DVD album made from our daily television broadcast. Each of these resources is available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. Andrew is pleased to offer his book, Romans, Paul's Masterpiece on Grace. This book includes all of Andrew's personal study notes and commentary on the book of Romans. This valuable resource is available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. Also available today is Andrew's Living Commentary software. The Living Commentary includes more than 50 years of Andrew's Bible study notes and personal encounters with God. This extraordinary resource contains his footnotes and commentary on over 25,000 Bible verses. Andrew has priced this valuable study tool at only $120. Go to awmi.net to download yours today. We want to say a special thank you to the Grace Partners of Andrew Womack Ministries. Your gifts make it possible to put free ministry materials into the hands of many people in need. If you're not already a Grace Partner, we ask you to pray about becoming one today. You can become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. To write us, use the address on your screen. 